Ian, I trust all is well. I am sending you this email. As a reminder, you were to send me confirmation relative to our discussion involving regarding EpiPen. In that discussion, in that discussion, you indicated that you would be divesting your adrenaline adrenaclick product once the Pfizer King deal closes. I understand your tender offer is closing today, so I would appreciate receiving your response as soon as possible. All the best, Heather. So recently we know that Joe Manchin has been a, uh, he's been a hot topic in the news because he's the Senate parliamentarian and the, despite the Senate parliamentarian really not supposed to be holding that much power, like it's not supposed to be an extremely important position. Joe Manchin has, uh, ended up having this disgusting amount of undue influence on the, uh, on public policy as a result of um him being this weird swing player who claims he's a democrat but constantly sides with republicans on shit despite the fa despite the fact that him doing this seems to be nothing but trying to kiss asses meanwhile the people's like actual lives are at stake well here we're not as much going to talk about joe manson <laughs> joe mansion rather than we're going to talk about his daughter Joe Manchin's daughter's name is Heather Bresh, and some interesting news came out about her that I stumbled upon earlier today, and decided I'd cover it on the show tonight. So, you know how for several years now, for a while, whether it was like Martin Shkreli at first, or uh, whoever the fuck, you know how for years there's been a big fight over how the price of EpiPens, the epinephrine auto-injectors commonly carried by people with severe allergies in case they start experiencing like symptoms of anaphylactic shock to like you know save their fucking lives yeah you know, that's there's been like constantly inflating prices in epipens well it turns out that joe mansion's daughter might actually have something to do with this well not might not might have something to do with this she has played a pretty fucking direct role in this whole thing. So, yeah, I know that the intercept can be kind of sus and it's like, and like Glenn, Glenn, and like Glenn Greenwald has done a lot of shit with them. Unless I'm, am I mixing shit up? Whatever. Not really relevant to this. Anyway. So, Heather Bresh, who is the former president and CEO of the drug maker Mylan, worked directly with the CEO of Pfizer to keep the prices of EpiPens artificially high, according to new documents that have been released as part of this ongoing lawsuit. Documents also show Bresh approving a fucking scheme to force customers who were captured by this company's monopoly over epinephrine auto epinephrine auto injectors, which they're with their brand EpiPens. Yeah, so documents are showing that Bresh had approved a scheme to force customers to purchase two EpiPens at once. I'm doing pretty decent, Proctor. Although I'm rather salty because uh, we're talking about ghouls inflating the prices of uh, life-saving medication for their own personal profit. But we totally don't live in a dystopia, right? Definitely not dystopian. Yeah, so we all know EpiPen is an auto-injectable device that injects epinephrine and that can be the difference between life and death for a person who's having a severe allergic reaction. Yeah, so these documents have been released as part of this ongoing antitrust suit that's going on in federal court. Judge Daniel Crabtree back in June issued a summary judgment that partially cited with... Uh, with Mylan, the uh, with Mylan, the drug maker that was uh, wor that was that manufactures EpiPens, and also partially sided with the plaintiffs. So this case is going to go on. However, late last week, this judge uh, unsealed some of these documents that under that are underlying the plaintiff's case. Among do these documents is an email that was sent on behalf of Bresh, 
who is Joe Manchin's daughter, as we have mentioned already, to her counterpart at Pfizer, who is at the time the CEO, e- e- who is at the time CEO Ian Reid. Yeah, Sage, it's fucking gross, and so it's really ridiculous how much the uh, the prices of EpiPens have inflated, and so it's extra fucked up to see that Joe Manchin, the asshole who, uh, the asshole who has held up so much policy that could have actually made a fucking, like, something of a fucking difference for people in this current, like, dystopian is all fuck climate we, we live in. He has a fucking personal connection to this through his daughter. Yeah, in this email, it was sent 10 years ago in January 2011, Bresch confirms a previous discussion with Reed in which she says that the two agreed that as part of a deal, Pfizer would disinvest from its EpiPen competitor, Adrenaclick, and that eliminating this main competitor would then allow Mylan to continue raising its prices. And here, here we have a one of many smoking guns. Holy fuck. They're charging fucking, hold up. They're charging fucking patients 30 goddamn dollars now for using a fucking cotton ball. Pepe mods. Well, let's look at this smoking gun. Uh, let's see if I can get this zoomed in for you. That's good. Hey, Ro. We're doing decent. We're just, uh, we're molding because of this whole thing where it's been revealed that, that, uh, Joe Manchin's daughter was like straight up directly involved with this scheme to artificially inflate the price of EpiPens, epinephrine auto injectors. Here's the here's one of the smoking guns. I know I've said it multiple times, so send her Melissa R. Shreve on behalf of Heather Bresh. Sent Friday, January 28th, 2011, 602 p.m. Recipient Ian C. Reed at Pfizer.com. Ian, I trust all is well. I am sending you this email. As a reminder, you were to send me confirmation relative to our discussion involving regarding EpiPen. In that discussion, in that discussion, you indicated that you would be divesting your adrenaline adrenaclick product once the Pfizer King deal closes. I understand your tender offer is closing today, so I would appreciate receiving your response as soon as possible. All the best, Heather. It's pretty goddamn obvious that Heather Bresh had so, that Heather Bresh was involved in this fucking was involved in this whole scheme in order to actively like endanger the lives of a m- millions of people to make a couple companies a fucking dollar. Like this is absolutely ridiculous. So in 2007, when Mylan acquired the rights to to market the EpiPen from to Epi to market the drug from Merck by buying its specialty pharmaceutical subsidiary uh, day a two pack of whew, excuse me a two pack of EpiPens cost less than a hundred bucks that's a tiny fucking fraction of what it costs today a tiny fraction this isn't because of like giant upticks there, it's not like there's any giant uptick in the fucking production cost going up. This is literally just uh, this is literally just artificial inflation. Yeah, so this deal with Merck was that Mylan manufactured the part part of the EpiPen delivery system, but didn't manufacture the actual drug itself, but owned the brand name and the right to distribute this whole product. The drug itself was produced ex- was produced by King Pharmaceuticals, and they would produce it exclusively for Mylan to then make it part of this delivery system. And what the what the fuck? This is absolutely fucking ridiculous. This is such a ridiculous fucking circle jerk of people jerking each other off in the form of just throwing fucking money at each other. When we and we the like average Joe jerk off are the people that foot the fucking bill for this. 
King in 2010 announced that it would be purchased by Pfizer, which was licensed to sell Adrenoclick, which is a competitor to EpiPen the previous year. This deal between Pfizer and Mylan led the former to withdraw its competitor from the market and to partner with Mylan on EpiPen, which then locked down a monopoly. And of course, within five years of this deal with Pfizer, Mylan drove up the price of EpiPens to six hundred dollars you know for i kept uh learning from that process for so i kept thinking that i kept thinking that this was the thing that martin shkreli was tied to also but i i'm glad that i didn't really bring him up other until other than like now because i was actually incorrect on that i just like now remembered that martin shkreli was involved with some like retro like anti-retroviral drug but uh Yeah, so... Of course, while all this circle jerking is going on, that results in Pfizer and Myelin driving the price up to of a two-pack of EpiPens up to above $600 within five years. Yeah, and that might not even be the like current cost of it. That might be the cost like five years ago. Because it said within five years relating to... Uh, 2007 so yeah this was before 2000 sometime between 2007 and two, before 2012 the price of a two pack of EpiPens rose to six hundred dollars meanwhile gail mansion who is heather brush's mother lobbied states to require schools to stock epinephrine as the head of the national association of state boards of education now of course Making it mandatory for schools to stock epinephrine isn't necessarily a bad thing because, you know, it's important that schools, like, keep a supply of some life-saving shit like this in case, like, some student with allergies ends up, like, having a severe reaction to something. However, this is all extremely sketchy when Gail Manchin... Joe Manchin's wife, Ed the Brush's mother, was lobbying for schools to have to stock this while her daughter is over making some deal with Pfizer to just endless to, so to create a monopoly and then endlessly drive the fucking price up. And Jesus Christ, Ro, we're literally paying like over a hundred times more for we're paying like like, oh, what is it? I'm going to look it up. What the fuck is the cost of a... Okay, so this website is showing me this website comparing a bunch of, like, random, uh... I made sure it wasn't doxing me before I put it on stream. This website, these are with free coupons. From this website, you're still paying for, like... A two pack of EpiPens. Like anywhere between like 110, which after sales tax probably comes out to like 115. And 260 something dollars. And these are like discounted from retail price. Like what the actual fuck is this? Oh wait, we know what the actual fuck this is. This is what happens when the daughter of somebody who serves in fucking Congress and in a high rank in a high ranking position and his wife who is the fucking like What's she the fucking head of? She was the head of the National Association of State Boards of Education. That's right. Yeah, this is the result of when this family that is so, like, intimately tied with fucking business and politics starts endlessly going into some fucking circle jerk to make this shit as profitable as physically possible. Yeah, and of course, Gail Manchin was recently con confirmed to serve as the co-chair of the Federal Appalachian Regional Commission, which is a government agency tasked with promoting economic development across th fucking 13 states in Appalachia. She needs to resign that job right the fuck now. Anyways, cutting a deal with Pfizer to divest from its competitor maybe is brazen enough, but of course, to memorialize the agreement... 
in an email produces a starting window. Yeah, so to, to memorialize the agreement in an email produces a startling window into the ways in which corporate executives are able to completely fucking manipulate markets. Free market my fucking balls. And people act like this, pro and then anarcho-capitalists try to tell us that this won't be like an even fucking bigger issue. Also, hey, how you doing, Ursula? Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, this is, this is definitely a situation that calls for any Yamaro emotes that you might, that one might have access to. Because this is, this is bad. Yeah, we literally just read the email, so I don't even need to read that. Well, in case anybody missed the email part, yeah, so... The email literally said, and the actual like image of it is up above. I'm sending you this email as a reminder that you were to send me confirmation relative to our discussion regarding EpiPen. In that discussion, you indicated that you would be divesting your Adrenoclick product once the Pfizer King deal closes. I understand your tender offer is closing today, so I would appreciate your response as soon as possible. This is such obvious fucking price fixing and attempting and creating f like companies colluding to create monopolies to increase both of their pros uh, to increase both of their profits of course heather bresh since she's all tied up in this lawsuit she's coward she's not responding to any request for comment however mylan has consistently said that it has done absolutely nothing wrong in how it sets it the price of its epi pens which is obvious bullshit considering that in the uk they cost like six or eight pounds and then it's like free if you're fucking prescribed one Back in 2016, Bresh testified before Congress about the price increases in the in express of limited regret. Customers have paid full list price, while noting that many other customers paid less due to agreements with insurance companies and pharmacy benefit managers. Oh boy. No, it's okay. Not everybody paid a full fucking three hundred dollars for not everybody paid a whole three hundred dollars per auto injector. Nah, some, some people were able to get financial assistance after we put them through the fucking ringer about whether or not they qualified to make sure that we would have to make sure that we would be able to extort them directly instead of like the government helping the matter or us having to be like, nah, we'll let you have this for a little bit less just to say we feel sorry for you and your situation. Yeah, what blows my mind is how some people like actually unironically agree that like unironically agree with that statement. That like, bro, but if we if we tried to like do something about this is the free market, man, and if we tried to do something about this, then we would just become communist and we'd lose our Second Amendment and other like holy testament of the Bill and Re Bill of Rights, and it's all fucking it's all fucking brainworms. It, it's like absolute. I don't even know how to fucking describe it. I'm, mo I'm moving on. <laughs> now this, I find this quote to be kind of callous. Looking back, I wish we had better anticipated the magnitude and acceleration of the rising financial issues for a growing minority of patients who may have ended up paying full price or more. We never intended this. We never intended this bull fucking shit. You did intend this, you fucking slimy capitalist scum. They did intend this. Do not buy into their fucking lies. They did intend this. If they didn't intend... It, it, they did intend this because it would make them a shitload of money. They didn't give a fuck about people having trouble being able to fucking pay for something that could potentially save their goddamn lives. So amid news of this acquisition of... King Pharmaceuticals by Pfizer. Mylan, according to market analyst reports at the time, was worried that Pfizer was going to end up pushing ahead with its generic version and also cut Mylan out of the market. Yeah, in 2010, EpiPen was the dominant epinephrine auto injector. It controlled 91% of the world market, 96% of the US markets. This is all according with, to its SEC filings, but, uh, Adrenoclick, a cheaper generic alternative, was climbing quickly in mar market share because, you know, the 2010 financial disaster and uh, other shit like that left a lot of people really, really screwed over and try and looking for cheaper alternatives to things and just the general state of the economy ever since then. Well, 
Wall Street and big business had a lot of recovery. The average Joe Jerkoff, it's been getting worse and worse ever since then. And then it, and then it's hit the peak with the fucking COVID-19 deal. Anyhow, this Mylan deal with Pfizer would end up enriching both companies by divesting from Adrenaclick and continuing to allow Mylan to sell the EpiPen at inflated prices. Both of these firms would split the profits from the more expensive version which would allow Pfizer to earn more money than if it drove down the prices with a cheaper version. Literally fucking price fixing. This shit has had people thrown in fucking prison before. Have any of you ever seen the movie The Informant starring Matt Damon? That was about a guy who worked for Archer Daniels Midland Corporation or ADM which is a company that doesn't have that huge of a public profile, but is absolutely massive and has an enormous amount of control over our food supply. And uh, basically any like ingredient in any food that has something to do with corn, which is so prevalent in almost everything now with how often we're using uh, high fructose corn syrup and whatnot, all sorts of other things that are derived from corn, ADM often ends up having something to do with almost everything that sits in your fucking grocery store. And, uh, that movie, The Informant, that I brought up starred Matt, Matt Damon as this guy named Mark Whitaker, who was a, uh, was a guy who worked for ADM and in its division that, like, specialized in a product called Lysine. And he, and he, basically a bunch of people got busted and had to go to prison over this type of shit. Price fixing. But of course, all we're getting here is a fucking antitrust suit instead of like a serious SEC investigation looking to slap cups on people. I wonder why that is. Is it because the fuck... Is it because... Congress members are tied up with it? Probably. So yeah. Now that they had... The, this all totally makes sense. Now with the Monopoly lockdown, Mylan made its next move. This plan to eliminate its single... It's like single pack EpiPen in the United States and instead only sell the EpiPens in packs of two, requiring customers to purchase two at once and spend more fucking money. Yeah, this monopoly pre created space for yet another profiteering price, price fixing scheme. This new scheme created even more fucking revenue for Mylan to split with Pfizer, thus entrenching this monopoly, completely warring, uh, warding off any generic competitors that could force uh, that could force the prices to drop a little bit. And then also, you know, set aside, and then this revenue could also be set aside to dole out as rebates to any third parties who might complain about this shit, according to the fucking initial correspondence. And that's like exactly what that's exactly what Heather Bresh was fucking whinging about up here. She was trying to be like, but wait, wait, not everybody fucking paid full list price for this. A lot of people, you know, had health insurance and then pharmacies would help get them off the hook. Or we'd send them rebates. We never intended any of this. To ha we never intended this to happen. Bull fucking shit. They knew what the fuck they were doing. Yeah, these two schemes, they are separate, but they're mutually fucking reinforcing. This is literally an I jerk you off, you jerk me off deal. They're 60, the Mylan and Pfizer have been fucking 69ing with each other for profit. So, the idea to eliminate single pack, batted around internally late 2010, early 2011, according to emails produced as part of this suit. Mylan executive producer Bruce Fosser proposed the idea as a way to double revenue and create a strong potential generic defense. By January 2011, it had become Project X2 or Project Times 2, and executives spent the next several months executing this. This image was released from a federal court of a fucking PowerPoint slide explaining why they should eliminate, as like, stop selling single EpiPens. Only sell them in packs of two. Yeah, no medical justification is the purpose to change this policy. All motivated by money. 
Oh, here's another email that looks like it could be a smoking gun. Ivona Copagna, an associate project manager in Milan's marketing and sales operations division, wrote to two other employees in March 2011, senior management having a meeting. Here, I'll just read the actual email. Senior management is having a meeting with Heather on April 1st and wanted to provide her with an update on Project X2. I know that you were working on creating a medical rationale for Project X2. I'm pulling a slide deck together that will be used. Would you be able to forward me the information that I should use for the rationale and the way it should be worded? Oh my God, it's like not only, why are, have I not seen anything about like criminal investigations being done into this? Is it this like illegal as fuck or did we change, or did we actually like change the letter of the law to allow open price fixing normally when 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 like corporate stooges are getting this sleazy about shit they have the fucking sense to speak in code this is like barely even speaking in fucking code this is literally admitting out front i know that you're working on fabricating a medical rationale for some project we're doing in order to justify it because it'll, it'll make us money so in May, companies medical be medical professionals raised concerns that the plan did not align with medical guidance, according to an email CEO Lloyd Sanders sent Bresh. But after Bresh learned that learned that the co that the copay that most patients pay is the same for a single as it is for a two pack, she became very motivated to pull all the singles. According to an email from uh, Sanders that was not released publicly, but then was quoted by the judge in this most recent opinion. Company also conducted market research and concludes that since it was a matter of death, of life and death, customers would end up sucking it up and buying two pens if that was the only choice. They're being so open about it. These motherfuckers want you to die if you can't, if you will not or cannot take place in their scheme. And you are in this, and you have been born in this situation where you have severe allergies to things and you may die if you cannot get immediate aid while you are experiencing anaphylactic shock. Yeah, so marketing material disclosed as part of this lawsuit has included a number of quotes from caregivers and uh, physicians and others making the point that customers will suck it up and only buy two at once if that was the only choice. This is such a life or death thing. This is a quote from a caregiver. If I had to go from one pack to two pack, I could do it no matter what the cost. Of course, I'd like to save money by switching, but my son's life is worth more than a few dollars and I'd never risk it. Is it not incredibly obvious that these ghouls are just taking advantage of people like this? Yeah. By May, the me emails indicate that Mylan had begun pitching Pfizer on the project, suggesting that it could become a billion dollar brand if brought right. Rush continued pushing this idea through June and in July, the two companies met. The team met with Pfizer and they are completely on board, wrote uh, Sanders, who was a uh, who is uh, Heather Bresch's assistant who wrote a lot of these smoking gun emails. My own executives told Pfizer the scheme would most likely succeed because EpiPen, and EpiPen revenue was below the radar for most managed care organizations, according to an email released as part of the judge's recent order. Holy fuck. The judge's order... Also quotes from Bresch's disposition in which she said that Mylan didn't persuade Pfizer on anything and called the latter company a partner in the product. Pepe Mods. I'm struggling for the fucking words here. Beyond, you know, just like looking into my camera and shouting ghouls 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 we gotta get rid of the ghouls because you know that that part's like incredibly obvious but uh, motherfucker
This is so infuriating that this judge can see all this, but then go on to say, Mylan didn't persuade uh, Pfizer on anything. They are a partner in this product. Yep. Of course, yeah, this single pack of EpiPens was eliminated in the United States as executives then watched for a public blowback. Miley concluded there was no need to call or write the FA the FDA as it is not necessary and will raise more questions than we have answers, according to an email quoted in the order. Yeah, don't bring this up with the FDA at all, because then they'll start snooping around and we can't cover our asses enough. That's basically what that means. Pfizer announced it was uh Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that 100 percent antithesis. Yeah, EpiPens should be EpiPens and Narcan. EpiPens and Narcan should be, like, f completely free. Absolutely no questions asked. Like, you can go into any pharmacy and get a Narcan or a Narcan auto injector or an EpiPen. Yeah, exactly. Of course, also, yeah, you you gotta maybe like have registration or something for so for like so that you can keep track of like who's like a who's like a new person that's gonna need training on how to properly use the thing but aside aside from all this also how you doing tonight antithesis welcome back to the show yeah, Pfizer announced it was discontinuing its competitor on August 20th, 2011. A note from a Needham and Company an analyst announcing the news observed that Adrenoclick recently hit, hit a peak share of 10% in the epinephrine market, which had cut into EpiPen's dominance from a year earlier when all of the competitors had only, had like together, had only been at 4%. Pfizer executives forwarded the note with the subject line, one less risk to worry about EpiPen wannabe from Greenstone discontinued. Which was referring to the division of Pfizer that owned the rights to Adrenoclick, the uh, cheaper competitor to EpiPen. What the fuck? I really, really would love to see people try to defend this. Now that this is being revealed, I'd love to see Joe Manchin's ghoulish ass try to bend over backwards to defend his fucking daughter from these aren't allegations. This is literally like as if she was like walked in on after like in the process of, of like unloading the fucking magazine of a pistol into somebody's brain. Like, these emails are all such smoking fucking guns. That Heather Brash, the daughter of Joe Manson, is in directly involved in this sleazy fucking... In this sleazy fucking... Scheme. To artificially inflate the price of EpiPens. A life or death medicine for people with severe allergies to things who are at risk for, like, anaphylactic shock if they're uh, exposed to allergens. Heather Brush and this fucking asshole from Pfizer have been, make have been profiting from making regular Joe jerk-offs like you and me break the fucking bank. And, of course, this email, which just looking at the fucking subject line, is a smoking gun that Pfizer and uh, Mylan employees were involved in massive amounts of price fixing. Yeah, this email was sent around by Joanne Van Duzen, the uh, Joanne Van, du Van Duzen, the uh, director of business operations for Pfizer, according to correspondence that was then unsealed as a part of this suit. <coughs> James Cannon, who's the vice president for generic business alliances for, Gr for Greenstone, asked an assistant to send the note on to Dennis. The assistant forwarded to Dennis O'Brien. O'Brien had previously been president of King Pharmaceuticals Canada, and by then was serving as Meridian Medical... as Meridian Medical... Te was serving as... wait, what? I'm a little confused by this wording here. 
Was this guy serving as the president of Meridian Medical Technologies? Either way. Yeah, so Meridian Medical Technologies is the division of Pfizer that partnered with Mylan to produce EpiPen and ultimately benefited from this business 69ing scheme. O'Brien subsequently forwarded this news to Tom Hendel, the senior vice president for commercial pharmaceuticals at Meriden. By October, Island of Mylan, of course, moved to raise their fucking prices. So here we have another smoking gun email. Harry, Ron, Joe, Mike, and I are recommending a price increase now for EpiPen. The original plan was to increase in December or January, assuming there was no backlash from Project Times 2 at pairs. Project Times 2 implementation has been without any issues. Notice the emphasis on any. Last price increase was in May 2011. No pushback on that either. So Sanders, the CEO, the COO, my apologies, wrote to Bresh, daughter of Joe Manson, Manchin, the incremental sales would be five and a half to six million dollars, and it all drops to the bottom line. Of course, in the years that followed, the price has been going through the fucking roof. Pfizer, of course, has denied any actual wrongdoing, but has settled a class action suit for price fixing and is going to pay three hundred forty five million dollars. Yes, you heard me correctly. Three hundred forty five million dollars over the company's practices relating to the market for fucking epinephrine auto injectors. Well, just EpiPens now, because basically that brand has had a monopoly for years. They might have settled this class action suit, but I have yet to hear anything about this monopoly actually being fucking, uh, about this monopoly actually, like, getting busted and broken up, doing something to prevent, to, like, help alleviate the situation. So, yeah. There's also a suit against Mylan. This and Mylan also denies wrongdoing, but and this suit is ongoing. And Bresh has faced scrutiny in the past for the company's pricing of the life-saving drug. In uh, in 2019, Mylan officially merged with uh, Pfizer's Upjohn unit to form this new company called Viatris, and Bresh began the uh, process of stepping down from the company. She took with her. A $37.6 million exit package. That's right. $37.6 million. She completed her process of stepping down by retiring from Mylan in December of 2020, last year. Yeah, she was named chief officer back in October 2007. Chief, chief COO, chief operating officer of Mylan back in October of 07. This promotion, of course, immediately sparked some fucking scandal when the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette reported that her claim of having a master's degree in business administration from West Virginia was bullshit. Bresh's father, Manchin, was the governor of West Virginia at the time, and the school soon corrected the paper, saying that she obtained the degree. A subsequent investigation concluded that the initial answer had been right. Bresh was far short of having a fucking degree from West Virginia. University administrators fabricated her grade, her grade to get her over the line, which then led to multiple resignations from the university's like senior leadership. And to top all this off, five years later, Joe Manchin ended up being elected to the fucking Senate in 2012 in the aftermath of the death of Robert Byrd, the other ghoulish senator from Democrat, conservative Democrat senator from West Virginia, who was a ex clan member and uh, had been serving in the Senate since sometime in the fucking 50s. So, yeah, of course, Joe Manchin, uh, last week urged the Democrats to take a strategic pause whatever the fuck that means to a ghoul like him in consideration of the party's three and a half trillion dollar reconciliation package which is the centerpiece of the Biden agenda a key component of this bill would lower drug prices by allowing Medicare to negotiate directly with pharmaceutical companies instead of having to you know like do it through fucking 
instead of having to like do it peripherally through private insurers as like a go-between. This market power would save the government and patients billions of dollars over the next decade, but hey, perhaps even more importantly, it would give the government greater insight into how t pharmaceutical executives set prices. And this change, the change could reveal the type of collusion that keeps those rates high, exposing companies to risk of regulation or prosecution. So, yeah. Oh boy, Joe Manchin should honestly should resign his seat and there should be investigations opened up into him. Into his own ties, like personal ties to this dealing, to these dealings, not just his daughter's his own. If you ask me, it seems pretty um sus, to say the very least, that uh Joe Manchin was urging the Democrats to take a strategic pause in the consideration of this $3.5 trillion budget reconciliation, re reconciliation package. When this reconciliation package has a uh, component that would help lower drug prices by allowing Medicare to negotiate with pharmaceutical companies and thus could also give greater insight into how pharmaceutical executives end up like setting these prices which could give them a insider the government an insider look into the type of uh, sh price fixing that goes on behind the scenes which is straight up in illegal a lot of the time as far as i can remember correctly and also it's very um it's very you know weird coincidence that Joe Manchin's daughter just so happens to be one of these people that is benefiting from the mass that that was that was benefiting enormously from these ridiculous hikes in the prices of, of EpiPets. Of course, this is all something that could be solved if we just, you know, if, you know, we enacted some sort of socialized health care, for example, uh, Chatter Rowe earlier, who's from the UK, was saying how EpiPens cost the average Joe Jerkoff in the UK like six to eight pounds. Or if you have a prescription for one because you are, uh, because you have, because you have severe allergies that could, that could render the use of an, ep an, epi an epinephrine auto injector necessary. Oh, motherfucker, I can't remember where the hell I was going with that. Either way, yeah, we could make this all way less of an issue if we implemented some sort of socialized healthcare instead of what other weird, fucked up public private circle jerk is going on here. I know the fucking NHS isn't perfect, but holy mother of God, this is straight up dystopian. And there needs to be criminal investigations brought into all of these individuals, including especially considering Joe Manchin's uh, advocacy against better reg against uh, trying to better prevent this situation from happening. I think Joe Manchin should be investigated too, because this is all extremely extremely shady but of course knowing how Joe Manchin's been acting this comes of no surprise to me whatsoever that the uh the sleazy senator who was involved in a scandal when he was the governor the, the sleazy governor of West Virginia uh involving him basically coercing university administrators to fabricate uh, his daughter's grades after the fact because a newspaper uncovered the fact that she lied about her degree to get her job. Um, does not surprise me in the least that this same guy and his daughter, who benefits from his sleazy actions, are now getting uh, are now embroiled in the, are embroiled in this scandal, and you know. Have the one thing that does surprise me here is the pure stupidity of people to just send emails that are essentially digital smoking guns like this one. Uh, this PowerPoint slide that was so e apparently so easy for federal authorities to recover. Like, holy shit, 
Did they not even think that they would- did, were they really- did they seriously have the fucking hubris to think that they wouldn't get sued or potentially prosecuted over what they were doing? Are they seriously that fucking full of themselves? Ah, fail children. We're finally done fucking yapping about Mario Cuomo up here in New York because, uh, he's gone now. He's one failed child, and then we instantly move on to news of another one. And this failed child is... And this failed child might not be, like, weirdly sexually predatory like Andrew Cuomo is, but is involved in actively fucking over millions of people. Ultimately, the case is for, uh... The cases for socialized healthcare just end up making themselves of things like this. Conservatives and other and other shills for the privately owned health for the privately owned healthcare industry can keep on huffing their copium, but it's incredibly obvious what we need to do here in order to actually serve the public rather than serve the pockets of Joe Manchin and his daughter. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed what you just saw, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and hit the bell as well. I get notifications whenever I upload things. If you like live broadcasts, come on over to my Twitch channel, and if you really like what you see, then go on over to my Patreon and become a patron. Both of those links are in the description below, and I wish you a wonderful, wonderful day. <laughs> Fuck. I can't speak right now. God damn it. Fuck.